Percy. That's my good buddy, Cory Congilio, who is indeed cruising for a bluesin'. And that is merely a taste of the kind of guitar wisdom that Corey lays down on me in this one-on-one -on -one lesson special. In this video, Corey shows me a couple different approaches to breaking away from my typical stepdad blues licks and adding in a more jazzy arpeggio-based flavor into my playing. But a blues man, I am not. My life is far too happy to have the blues. But the cool thing about this is you can apply these things to your playing even if you're like a rock and metal guy like myself. We've heard players like Eddie Van Halen and Dimebag Daryl and Francis Bubble Trousers apply cool ideas like this into their playing in hard rock context our entire lives. But if you want to get even more out of this lesson and start adding some taste onto your hot licks even more faster, I recommend checking out my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. After Corey showed me these concepts, I started trying to think of an easy way to put a toe into these blues jazz blaz waters. And what I came up with is this really simple two-step, two-shape approach that I'm going to share with you guys on a very special bonus video that's available over there, even at just that $1 a month level. And to help you practice it even more better, I've also made a really simple A blues backing track, kind of like what we're playing over in this video. So don't delay, sign up today for all those goodies, plus a ton of other backing tracks, bonus lessons, downloadable tabs, and so much more. Now buckle up, because Corey's about to give us the keys to the blues rari. of chord. <laughs> Ooh, okay, yeah, now we're getting real right there. Those, those aren't cheap. <laughs> no, the interest rate alone on that stuff will tear you up. Hey kids, it's your good buddy Uncle Ben Eller here at lovely Sweetwater Campus as part of Gear Fest 2023, joined by my good buddy Mr. Corey Congilio. Oh man, so glad to finally do this with you. Dude, I'm so yeah. glad to Long time uh, coming. finally try to fake my way through blues with you, man. It's like, this is the, this is the before picture, this is the after <laughs> picture of playing, you know, thousands of hours playing over, you know, blues changes and stuff. And I feel like as guitar players, you know, we're kind of instructed from day one. It's like, okay, you're playing a blues in A, this is where you live. And I think through, you know, the, the various licks and things that we were doing there, I don't think either of us really treaded much in that bit of real estate right, right. there. And I feel like that's such a, uh, a misleading thing for guitar players. And that's kind of what I want to talk with you about today is like, how guys like me that are primarily rock and metal players can get away from playing the traditional, you know, box shape kind of yeah. stuff over blues changes. Because there's obviously a whole lot of potential out there. The stuff you play, dude, it like makes me laugh. Like every time that I'm playing with you, <laughs> it makes me you laugh because I mess up a lot. And <laughs> you hide, hide it, it very Dang, well. dude. <laughs> yeah, there's something about the way that you phrase that stuff that just oh, blows thanks, my man. mind. It's so fun and it's so interesting and so not stepdad blues licks. Right, you know what right. I mean? Which is great. There's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, just think if you played, you know, twelve bars of a cor of a blues, which we call a chorus. Yeah. And you did you could do that over all twelve bars. Totally, but, it works. Where are you gonna go from there? You know, maybe you want to hear something that's a little bit more interesting. And you also have to learn how to speak. So so five note sentences yeah. are good ways to start. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. You know, any of that works over the blues, but there are moments to start to expand on that. Right. And for me, what kind of opened all the light bulbs were, were arpeggios. Okay, yeah. Um, and since a blues is made up of generally three dominant seven chords, you can play the arpeggio that relates to each one of those. Right. You're like. Right. So that's your A7. Chord, there's an A, a C sharp, an E, and a G. Yeah. And then you repeat them. A, C sharp, E, G. Nice octave up. Same thing. Yeah, thing. exactly. And then when that D7 chord comes around, you can play the chords that correspond to it. D, F sharp, A, and C. 
Yeah. And, this and is you're a very ear, different like, approach yeah. from the metal guys and rock guys who go for the one scale fits all approach. Right. Where it's like, what's one thing I can just use over the whole thing? Right. That's kind of well, how I Sometimes you have it. to because in that music, it lends itself to that. It does. But when you're playing over dominant seven chords, there's a bunch of things you can do. And that's right. kind of like, aside from pentatonic, like the place you can start to kind of have more of the ear twisting stuff. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's over, you know, I can go. Yeah, and it's cool and you when you do that, you hear. Exactly. You hear the chords going on behind that, even though that chord's going on. Yeah. Right, exactly. So, one of my favorite things to do to get people into this is let's say you learn this. You got it. Almost got it. But what if you... <laughs> Call and respond with your pentatonic. So if you play just the play the funky A vamp you were playing. Okay, set two, three, four. Here's your scale. So you can play the chord, play the arpeggio, but then you can also respond with a pentatonic. Like, yeah, so maybe go. Joe Pass on the bottom, Eric Clapton on the top. Exactly. <laughs> and I feel like even this might be like kind of confusing to a lot of guys who are thinking very traditional Western music theory, major scale based harmony. Where right. It's like, how does that make sense? The chord has C sharp in it, the yep. third, but yep. you're saying I can play C, the flat third. It's like, how, how does that work? You That's know? The, always the thing where I go, yeah, I don't know. I know, because, right? Because playing, you could play minor over a dominant chord with a major third. Yeah. And in a course I went, you know, I, I made years ago um, called, it's a basically a beginner blues soloing thing. Yeah, I need I, that. I want to address that early to the listener, the, the student. And what happens is, you know, blues largely comes from an African-American background. Yeah. So they were singing these notes that really weren't in the scale. Sure. And bending... <laughs> Yeah, dude. So coming from that minor third to that major third. Yanking it up over that. Yeah, you're right. That gets into something. My terminology for that, I call that the neutral third. Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I picked that up from Adam Neely. I don't think I can even, you know, trademark that one. But yeah, it's like you have flat third, you have major third, but you also have neutral third where it's like eh, kind of quarter step third difference. you know stuff yeah, like exactly. that and even like yeah. metal guys and rock guys know that because Eddie Van Halen and Dimebag did that all, all the time, the time. well Dimebag's a great example because yeah. it's like if Billy Gibbons played metal yeah right you know, that's how I and Zach was a huge influence on me in the metal world too because those guys were doing all the Zach's southern rock metal yeah. to me you know that's the way my ear hears it and i was like okay i know that that stuff it was just with a lot of chops that i didn't sure. have you know or whatever but what you're what you're seeming to like what we talked about over this weekend was once you do those arpeggios learning those in all the positions you can find them in all the positions so yeah. when you're here so that didn't sound like no. You can go. See, that's, that's dope. Like, you're getting real jazzy on this stuff, man. It's getting expensive. It's all sound. coming from that, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I paid a lot to learn those. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are reaping the benefits. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, let me ask you. You were doing yeah. some, like, chromatic sounding stuff in there. Are you playing what I call the connect the dots approach? This is something that I do way too much. Like, if you had, for example, like that A7 arpeggio right there, right? Yeah. I see that as like this huge game of connect the dots. I'm like, okay, third to fifth. What if I just play everybody in between? You can absolutely do that. Like, is it that kind of thing you're thinking of? Or are you always kind of outlining the arpeggio and just filling in the gaps? Yes, and that's a, that's a major part of it that I've never taught taught it that way. Because if you start to break that section down just alone, yeah, you start to see like, okay, I have here's my pentatonic, here's my there's blues. my flat five blues, there's my major set, my my major third, yeah. There's 13, yeah. 9, yeah. you know. That's where we get away from the straight blues stuff and start sounding more jazzy, right? Yeah. 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 But what you can do with these arpeggios, which is my, my other favorite thing to do, 
and I try not to wear it out because it's one of those things you when you know it when you hear it. Oh, show me, but dude. But take take that shell. Let's start on the fourth string, okay. just for just for viewers to grasp it quickly. Start each one a half step below. I love it. Yeah. That's like totally a gypsy jazz thing too, right? I guess it would be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think of that stuff as being really cool and really. Uh, it can really help you like develop ideas out of not much anything. Because like when you're saying play around with the arpeggio, you're like, I have one, two, three, four notes. Yeah, that's, that's not, not enough. Right, right. But you're. Yeah, four notes. Play the next door neighbor. Now you have eight notes. That's more than you have in like major scales and modes. And exactly. All that stuff. You can even do and and I'll. I'll probably mess it up because I kind of I don't practice this enough, but it is something you can do. Okay. Where okay, so you're technically you're like A mixolydian, right? Sure, yeah. So it's just D major. So I think D major scale, and if I start on that A over the A seven. So before I do that, okay, play a scale tone above, then a half step below. So if you're so check this out. If your if your notes A, yeah, the next scale tone up is a B. Sure. But go, now go to that half step below your root. Okay. So there, there's a jazzier kind of lick right there. Take the and it's yeah. interesting. It's like you're still playing a chord that has a flat seven, but you're playing a regular seven too. Yeah. Oh. So you had. Uh, uh, it's it a, takes a while to get it. Yes. And just that alone. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. See, I never think to touch that like regular seven over a dominant chord. I'm like, that's the no touchy note. Right. It's in between right. the flat seven and the right. one. I never think to play that one. Yeah, but you, I mean, you'll see that pop up because you think like, oh well, why would I play that? It's a, it's a major seven sound against that. But it's a, if it's going by quickly. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, yeah. All is forgiven. Well, let me ask you this. So, you know, all the stuff that we were talking about there, where you're talking about over the A, playing the A7, call and response with minor pentatonic kind of ideas. Yeah. Do you do that chord by chord, where now when it goes to the four chord, or D, are you now thinking D arpeggio, D minor pentatonic scale? Not D minor pentatonic scale. It's too far off from where yeah. you started, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think about the... Because the thing is, in a blues, you're only going to have two bars for that chord to go to go by right you know over the one chord and plus you're always rooted in that sort of you're always here in bass. seven if you want to think about it as you know mixolydian you certainly certainly can in jazz you know you kind of are jumping from key to key quite often sure. in those changes yeah. and you can do that but you can play you know uh let's just play a shuffle in a two three four pentatonic dominant seven I'll play. I have to go back to the pentatonic because it just feels better. All pentatonic. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that was an arpeggio pentatonic. Exactly. Thing. So Keep going. that's dope, yeah. man. I still want to go. Yeah. Dude, so, like right like, over that five chord. It's so dope. I just played the E7 yeah. with arpeggio. But what's cool, if we take it one step further, not that we want to go in the weeds off of the blues, but you start to take like uh, major 7 arpeggio, like a... You know... Like this, now the sounds sentimental like that. major 7 after dinner chord. But sometimes we're about to go, is if you play it over like, let's say it's a... But it's a freaking jazz sounding yeah. thing over top of that, or like I like to do it over. Whoa. And that sounds like it's in your world now. Yeah, what? over a straight up triad. Yeah, yeah. But I'm playing a major seven arpeggio. Ah. Dude. I don't know 
know about you, but like I look at stuff like that as the chord is just a, a narrow set of permissions of what notes you can play. There's the no canvas. seven there, no. so you get to decide. You what can kind of decide what to do. Arpeggio is like the one note more of a triad, one yeah. extra note. You know, so knowing triads and arpeggios will help you accomplish that kind of stuff. But yeah. to me, the dominant seven thing was always just the the trick to getting that sound faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's. That's where I live. That's yeah. really dope, man. Yeah, man. That sounds amazing. It's so cool how just adding in some of those little things, like the... That yeah. kind of thing, it's like, oh, I just raised my, my price tag a little bit, right? By, you know, a couple cents, because that's all I can play worth is a few cents more than, than a pentatonic <laughs> but you know. Um, anyway, it's just a, it's a lot to kind of get under your fingers, so you want to take it slowly and just try to work out some of those shapes when you can. Well, let me ask you one more question. Yeah. Whenever you were kind of learning to play around with these arpeggios over blues changes, did you do this in a very boring setting up the metronome with your scale charts in front of you way? Or did you learn this stuff on the job? And it's just like, I just went out and played a bunch and tried stuff. Which, which way did you learn? Like, like all practice, there's a lot of boredom involved in yeah. you know so I always say there's practice and then there's fun fun time yeah noodle time and that's what you should be doing on your time is having fun getting your sounds having a relationship with your instrument but there should be a fair amount of work where what I would do is write etudes of like that's all I have to And you just kind of use that as like, this is the, the canvas, yeah, and then just decorate from there. I never took classical lessons or anything like that, but I understand that an etude is a piece of music that's based around practice. Yes, yes, You know, yes, it's yes. a way to understand a concept. Yeah. So it's songful, but it's like maybe not what you play at the blues jam. Right, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, you don't want to play, you know... <laughs> you don't want to do that, you know. That, that's kind of counterintuitive, but, right. you know, um, it's, it's a backdrop for understanding... How can I use this eventually? That's rad, yeah. man. That's yeah, such dude. a great place for you know rock guys that are just familiar with the good old gin and tonic scale to start adding a little bit higher interest rate. I'm on getting top so many things I can steal from you, so. <laughs> dude. That's what I say. I'll, this whole I'll time copyright too. you all the time. <laughs> I'll, I'll go shout you out. Hashtag Ben Eller, dude. You know, ben Eller says, "Heck, man, that's yeah. awesome." Well, dude, thanks so much for the insight. Oh man, this is awesome. We've been this wanting to do this for a while. And, uh, what's your stuff that we can uh, can promote, man? You got your channel going, yeah, which is so killer. My channel is just under my name. Thank you so much, Corey Congelio, and then. You'll see lots of links on those things. It takes you to my lesson company or lesson site called WorkingClassGuitar.com, and I actually put uh, two eBooks out on the very topic we just talked about. The first one is getting to know the whole neck with arpeggios. The second one is actually implementing them. Um, and they're interactive eBooks. You read, you see the lesson. It says, "Check this example out." Click the link. It takes you to the video. Couldn't be it's easier. really fun. That's it's awesome. It's a really man. cool way to learn. Definitely. Yeah, I need man. to check those out myself, man. Well, let's play them out here a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, three, 